time today because of the wonderful technology that I carry around on me personally. So uh, Pedro's going to give his pitch right now. The company's called Road Finch. They're located out in the Central Valley. And Pedro, I'm going to let you go, OK? okay. Do, do you want to, uh, can we get here back? Pedro, would you like to explain to everybody 
what the advertising looks like. Okay? Uh, that's kind of important because that's what puts you a little aside from everybody else that's out there. Yeah, actually, uh, so I'd like you to imagine a regular bicycle, but this time it has a about five foot trailer attached to the back of it, which has a large mobile billboard. Now, most people nowadays are accustomed to hitting the pass or the skip button on YouTube. And with us, you can't skip it. So when this is coming down the street, it's something that is completely unorthodox you have not seen before. You're going to look at it. When you're looking at it, it's that advertising dollar was spent because you noticed it. It's something that you'll go back to your house, talk to your friends, and say, hey, I saw this crazy contraption with a sign on it. It was, uh, oh, for Team Mobile. They had a deal going on Black Friday. When was the last time you saw a commercial and you went back home and you actually told your friends, like, hey, I saw this crazy commercial or I saw a billboard that said something? Probably not that often. Um, it, it's an intriguing you know, idea. One of the things that hit me was <clears throat> if you are opening up two more offices, why do you need another $500,000? Essentially, what we're looking for is to be able to rapidly expand this company uh, to eliminate any other companies from coming up. We know that by expanding the size of the company, we can offer larger corporations the ability to launch uh, larger marketing campaigns. Essentially, the 2016 election is coming up, so if we're able to, i.e., the Republican base and the Democratic base, and be able to offer them large, let's say, California. Uh, so, yeah. so what that tells me is that you probably should be asking for more than five hundred thousand. Actually, our model is very low price to uh, we, uh, we design and build everything in house, so that allows us. Uh, the entire model is built on a very low cost, and that goes into our complete expansion. Okay, so I'm not going to ditch the microphone. Uh, who is the team, and who are the bike riders? Uh, essentially, the bike riders are brand ambassadors. They're employees of the company. We hire them on for rigorous training, making sure that they fit the key role that will represent our customers in a good light. Essentially, our team consists of a HR manager because this company is a heavy, heavy HR responsibility. And that's something that no other company to date that does have it has the manpower and wants to tackle this, this nightmare other than us. Uh, essentially, we have a web designer which, uh, when we're out on the street and we're offering our customers the ability to advertise, we want to offer them a full package. Why do we want to advertise a product that then they go to their website and it's subpar? We lose them there. So essentially, we offer the extra bells and whistles, which web design, graphic artist is another person that's on the team. Yes. Um, I need to find <laughs> Okay, so here's a question, and this is this may be for the lawyers on the, on the panel. Um, who takes on the liability? So if I'm a customer and I want to hire you, if I understand you, and I want to, I, I want you to advertise my business, does the customer have to also accept the liability if something happens to the driver? No, actually, we don't finish the contract. We already have it written, and it's our part. So pretty much. We take full responsibility of everything. The only thing you are paying for is the actual advertising dollar as if you were to pay for a billboard to be installed on the freeway. Or you, you know you, you're not taking responsibility for the construction crew that's putting the billboard itself. So the company takes all that liability, and that's actually written into our, uh, into our contract. So you're just paying for the service itself. Okay. Uh, Mr. So I'm a big fan of like disruptive marketing ideas, and actually the funny thing is I I, um, I know somebody who did something similar to you, just a little bit. Mark Benioff did it around like 15 or 16 years ago. Uh, he had hired people on bicycle rickshaws, uh, rickshaws uh, riding around the Siebel event. I'm not sure if people still here know that, but Siebel was basically the, the safe spot of the past that was running on service and we needed a client. And they were bicycling around the Siebel event and advertising Salesforce, giving people free rides to serve some coffee. So it's kind of similar, you know, that they ran on billboards because it was simply way too expensive. There wasn't even a flat screen TV at this point in time. You know? So, uh, but I think your idea goes in this direction. 
Um, I think it's an interesting idea, and I think you have a good market there. What I really liked is uh, you were very calm when you presented. I'm sure you didn't do this the first time. Uh, maybe it wasn't even not the 10th time, maybe it was the 20th time, but this is very good how you presented the product. Uh, I really like how you started the pitch. Uh, I think everybody should try to really start with a problem. Uh, to try to think about problem, the solution that you have, by the traditional advertising, you really start with the story. I think everybody could relate to you. You could also see in people's faces that people started really like listening to you and like, what else is he really talking about? And then um, you really talk about your solution. You talk about how big the market is, um, how you plan to go after the market, what you want to do, you want to raise some money. So I really just like the whole pitch. Very calm, very organized, and I think there's a market for it. Very good, good job, all right? I'm proud of you and everything like that. Uh, I've worked with Pedro from the very inception of his pitch and, and have sat with him um, half a dozen to a dozen times, and Pedro's a testament to any entrepreneur that kind of comes to you and says, you know, we need a little help with getting our message out and everything. You know? So every beat that he hit tonight, everything, every point that he got across and everything is all, all honor and power to this kid who was not there three months ago with the same pitch, right? And one thing I also wanted to say is thank you to everybody else that got up in front of this group. This is not easy for anybody who's not used to doing this. And, you know, we have three international startups that came before Pedro. And I mean, my hat's off to you. I mean, your English is a hell of a lot better than my Italian, my Japanese, and my German, which is non-existent, okay? But I mean, really, good for, I mean, good on you, pat on the back, hats off to you, and Pedro, I'm very proud of you. Good job, okay? Thank you. And 